tonight's Art Linklater's house party. From Television City in Hollywood. And now, here's the star of our show, Art Linklater. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, um, I'm just a little flustered today. Generally, I'm not. I've been in this business a long time. In fact, I'm uh, uh, flustered enough I might drop an ad lib or two here and there because I'm so delighted and so tickled pink by our guest star today because she's an old personal friend. I've admired her so much through her career. She's beloved by everybody in Hollywood. She's the Goldwyn girl who became television's finest comedian, Lucille Ball. As well as I love Lucy, just as you do, and I'm so pleased that she can join us today. You see, Lucy and I are, are neighbors, too, on the radio. My house party radio show and her show, Let's Talk to Lucy, are heard in the same hour on most of these CBS stations all over the United States, hundreds and hundreds of them. And Lucy and I, among other things today, are going to have some fun looking back on the days when we were first good friends years ago on CBS radio, long before television. We're going to show you how television, what radio did in those days. It's going to be a lot of fun. One of the most popular programs on CBS radio today is a very informal kind of show that's as relaxed and casual as its name, which is Let's Talk to Lucy. And you know, Lucy's guests are all kinds of guests, show business friends and the, all, all the well-known people all over the country, and Lucy interviews them, which of course is really my business, and so it's my turn to ask all the questions, so let's talk to the gal you all love, Lucy, Lucille Ball, ladies and gentlemen. to hear that applause, isn't it, Lucy? Because that tells them yeah. that you, they love you. That's not demand applause either. That just came boiling up right out of the audience. No signs, nobody rushing back and forth, giving them signals. In fact, you, interestingly enough, I introduced lots of guests on this show, and uh, would it interest you to know that the only other person in the last 10 years that got this much applause, like this, was Dick Van Dyke. They love him, too. I can understand that. Dick is a very popular new star. That's my, my favorite show on television. Incidentally, you've done uh, so much television. Uh, 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 uh. I don't have time to see your show. I'm working. I know you are. You work an awful lot. And that's well, I work in the daytime. Yeah, but I mean, people say, what is Lucy doing adding a radio show to, this, to the job of, of being the head of a big studio and doing a big uh, television show? Well, it gave me a chance to talk to people, my friends, like yourself, and uh, interview them in a way that uh, I think the audience gets a chance to meet them for the first time a little differently than they do in, in um, well, like fan magazines. Mm -hmm. I don't dig the uh, fan mag type of interview. It is kind of fakey, but yours, also the show, I think, gives you a chance to be yourself. And I think that's fun. Isn't it satisfying to say some of the things as Lucille Ball, not the comedian? Yeah, now that I think of it, that was the reason I wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the first time I haven't played a character, that's right. You can just be yourself. Yeah. And a gal that we all know here in Hollywood who is a, probably, before she's a star, is a mother and a devoted mother. And your two kids that I've seen grow up, how old are they now? Desi was 12 a couple of weeks ago, and Lucy's 13 and a half. Oh, and are they showing any show business uh, inclinations? Yes. Uh, they're pretty hammy. <laughs> <laughs> How can they fight that heredity? <laughs> they love to perform. They really do. Any music? Yes, Desi plays the drums, and he belongs to a combo or two yeah. and performs every chance he has. And uh, Lucy's more reticent about it, but very talented. Uh -huh. How are they in schoolwork? B+. Plus. Oh, then they don't ask their mother for help. Yes, they do, and I can't help them with very much. <laughs> with a B Especially plus, the I math. Know. The math. Ugh. I'm going to have to go back to school. Well, now, of course, your family also includes Gary Morton, and he is your producer on the radio program, and yes. a great, big, tall, handsome guy. How'd you meet Gary? Well, uh... In show business? Yes, I was doing Wildcat in New York, and some friends asked us, um sort of a blind date, uh -huh. and I put it off for three or four weeks because, uh, you know, midnight after you've worked hard yeah. all day is uh, not the nicest time to go out with a new oh. boy mm -hmm. friend. And uh, so I sort of said no for a while. One night I was hungry and I wanted pizza, and there he was. 
gastronomic romance. <laughs> and now, of course, in addition to being on the radio five days a week, interviewing all of her friends and her family, which takes an important part in her life, and her studio, you've taken on a tremendously important job that I had about three years ago. Such a rewarding job. The national chairman of the Easter Seals. And as such, you're going to have a big thrill in a week or two, aren't you? Yes, I am. Back to the White House. Yes. And, uh... A few other places, New York, Chicago. Mm -hmm. You'll be traveling. I think Hedda did it the year after I did it. And uh, the year I was uh, the Easter che Seals chairman, I, uh, President Kennedy was in the White House, and I had the thrill of meeting him and being photographed. And so the Easter Seals will have a wonderful chairman in Lucy, who does, of course, a lot of other charitable things. Are you a businesswoman? Do you really sit back at the big desk? I sit back at the desk. <laughs> but uh, I listen a lot. That's good. And I cry a lot. <laughs> in a moment, Lucy and I are going to take you back to the early days of radio. Both of us were in that medium up to our necks before television ever came along. We're going to show you what a radio show looked like in the studio, back of the microphones, as it was being broadcast. And we'll be back in just a minute, Lucy. Now here's a message about new Final Touch fabric softener. In the early days of radio, you know, we all stood around in the studio holding scripts and reading all the lines and doing the things that you heard instead of saw. And the unsung hero of every radio drama was the sound effects man. He made the whole world come to life right before your eyes, that is, through your ears. So today, we're going to show you what a radio show the good old days looked like in the studio as it was being broadcast. Now, of course, I'll play the star, but this is my show, you know. Jack Slattery will be the announcer, and Lucy LeBeau will be the sound effects man. The show begins. The Adventures of Sam Sly, Private Eye. Sam Sly, Crusader for Justice, who has sent a thousand public enemies to prison. Tonight, Sam Sly is driving down a remote country road in his high-powered car. way to the secret hideout of Big Dutch, the wily king of the underworld. Sam has just learned that Big Dutch has kidnapped Sam's secretary, Sadie, in a desperate hope of making a deal with Sam and escaping a term in prison. <laughs> Sam, planning to rescue Sadie, slows down as he nears the hideout. Close to a stop with his lights out. Very softly, he opens his car door and slips out. <laughs> Sam speaks. Sure is windy tonight. <laughs> Windier than that. <laughs> I think I can sneak inside the basement by jimmying this window carefully. It's so dark down here. It's, it's so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. A pin. That was a fraternity pin. Oh. This place gives me the creeps. Listen to those mice running around. said mice. Mice. I'm afraid of mice. Oh. Sadie's got to be here somewhere. What was that? A scream? Ah! I thought so. She must be upstairs. That's where she is. No, no, I think she's downstairs. No, she's upstairs. No, no, I'm sure she must be downstairs. Maybe she's outside. That's it. That's it. No, I think she's inside. What, what happened there? I forgot to open the door. <laughs> well, anyhow, hearing another scream, ah! I ran down the hallway like the wind. Jane! And with all my weight, I hurled myself against a door. <laughs> a door. Well, that was a glass door. What do you want? Solid mahogany? Sadie, Sadie, where are you? Help! Help! Aha, uh -huh. I'll save you, Sadie. It is I, Sam Sly. 
Big deal. Aha! Uh -huh. She must be in this closet. Sadie, <laughs> baby, you look shocked. Sadie, speak to me. How do you feel? I'm pooped. Uh, 